God is our exceedingly great reward. While I do agree Jesus took our sins, I'm not sure about rewards other than being in heaven with him and the Father and the Holy Spirit. Okay, so yeah, let's talk about where the Bible does talk about rewards. James 1.12 says we'll get a crown of life. Matthew 16.27 says that we will get repaid according to what we've done. In Revelation 22.12, again, he says that we will be repaid. In Matthew 5.12, part of the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus says that our reward in heaven will be great. Matthew 25.21, this is the one I really am looking forward to, is just him simply saying, well done, good and faithful servant. I mean, that means a lot. 1 Corinthians 2.9 says, What no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the heart of man imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. So it's beyond our imagination. So inevitably, someone's going to bring up 2 Corinthians 5.10, For we all must appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each one may receive what is due for what he has done in the body, whether good or evil. Now, the word judgment there is not the same as judgment else places. It's Bema, and the Bema seat was where, like, Olympic-type judges would reward athletes. That's what it's about. So why does it say evil there? Keep in mind that Jesus called all of us evil. We are sinful beings, and so if there's anything that we do not do for God, then by comparison, it's evil. So even these benign things that we do, if you just sit there and listen to a song that has, doesn't have God in it, it's not sinful, but it's not good either. So by comparison to the goodness of God, it's evil. So when our actions are evaluated, we get rewards on the good stuff and the rest is burnt up. How do I know? Because of his preceding letter in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 12 through 15. Now, if anyone builds on the foundation with gold, silver, precious stone, wood, hay, straw, each, one will, each one's work will become manifest for the day we'll disclose it, because it will be revealed by fire. And the fire will test what sort of work each one has done. If the work that anyone has built on the foundation survives, he will receive a reward. So the idea of the fire goes along with not only the hay and stubble being burned up, the worthless things, the things that are comparatively evil to God's good, but then also what's going to survive the fire? Well, that's going to be the gold, the silver, the precious stones. So he's listing a bunch of things. Some things are flammable, some things are not. But when it's evaluated, the stuff that was worthless is going to just disappear. But the things you did for God, that's what you get rewarded on. But let's not forget that this passage right here tells us, what our greatest reward is, and that is God himself. 